Hi, everybody. Today is Friday, October 14th, 2022. I am man getting ready for game three of the Phillies Brave series. And today we're going to be working on another exorcism elixir track. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom because we're getting up there. Um, and today we're going to be doing behaviors and use. And then we're going to work on the dancing dots example. So let's jump right in. Uh, behaviors. Uh, allow us to define interfaces, uh, sets of functions and macros in a behavior module that can be later implemented by different callback modules. Thanks to the shared interface, those callback modules can be used interchangeably. Big note here, uh, you have to note the British spelling of behaviors. Uh, that's what Elixir uses, so just be mindful of that. Um, to define a behavior, we need to create a new module and specify a list of functions that are part of the desired interface. Each function needs to be defined using the callback module attribute. Uh, the syntax is identical to a function type spec. Uh, we need to specify a function name, a list of argument types, and all the possible return types. So in this example, we've got a module called countable. Uh, there is a callback called count, a uh, callback function called count. It accepts any type of uh, value uh, in the variable called collection, and it returns a positive integer. Um, cool. Uh, implementing behaviors. To add an existing behavior to our module, create a callback module, we use the add behavior module attribute. Its value should be the name of the behavior module we are adding. Then we need to define all the functions, callbacks, that are required by that behavior module. If we're implementing something, somebody else's behavior, like Lexer's built-in access or gen server behaviors, we would find the list of all the behaviors callbacks in the documentation on hexdocs.pm. A callback module is not limited to uh, implementing only the functions that are part of its behavior. It is also possible for a single module to implement multiple behaviors to mark which functions uh, come from which behavior. We should use the module attribute at impl before each function. Its value should be the name of the behavior module that defines its callback. So in this example, we've got a module called book collection. It is going to uh, honor the countable behavior and such. Uh, it's going to implement a function called count and we decorate that function with the impl countable. So it's kind of a sign that like this, the reason we're implementing this is because of this behavior. Uh, then you can implement all kinds of functions yourself, other functions yourself. Um, when defining the behavior, uh, it is possible to provide a default implementation of a callback. This implementation should be defined uh, in, quoted, in the quoted expression of using macro to make it possible for users of the behavior module to override the default implementation uh, called def overridable macro. After the function implementation, it accepts a keyword list of function names as keys and functionalities as values. So. Here again, uh, we've got uh, define module countable. We list our callback, and then inside of the def macro we're using, we quote um, uh, behavior countable def count collection do enum dot count collection def overridable count one. So yeah, we provide the function and we also express that it is overridable. Uh, note that defining the function inside of using uh, is discouraged. Well, I'll note that defining functions inside of using is discouraged for any other purpose than defining default callback implementations, but you can always define functions in other modules and import them using in, in the using macro. Blah. Uh, cool. And so to accomplish dancing dots, we're also going to need to work on the use uh, concept documentation. So uh, the use macro allows us to quickly extend our modules with functionality provided by other modules. When we use a module, that module can inject code into our module. It can, for example, define functions, imports, or alias other modules, and set module attributes. If you ever looked at the test files for of some of the Elixir exercises here on Exorcism, you most likely notice that they all start with use xunit.case. This single line of code is what makes the macros test and assert available in the test module. So we've got our lasagna test and we call use x unit dot case. And that's going to inject all of the, the other like macros and stuff. So that's what allows us to use the word test and the word assert. 
as like a uh, custom DSL type thing. Uh, what exactly happens when you use a module is dictated by that module's using a macro. Uh, it takes one argument, a keyword list with options, and it returns a quoted expression. The code in this quoted expression is inserted in our module when calling use. So for example, when xunit.case is used, uh, the quoted expression uh, import xunit.assertions and import xunit.case only, and it brings in a couple of very specific functions, um, is imported. Uh, the options can be given as a second argument when calling use, uh, e.g. xunit.case async true. When not given explicitly, they default to an empty list. So, with all that said, we are going to be working on the dancing dots uh, example. Uh, your friend and aspiring artist reached out to you with a project idea. Uh, let's combine his visual creativity with your technical expertise. It's time to dabble in a generative art. Constraints uh, help creativity and shorten project deadlines. So you've both agreed to limit your masterpiece to a single shape, the circle. But there's going to be many circles and they can move around. You call it dancing dots. Your friend will definitely want to come up with a new elaborate movement for the dots, so you'll start by coding, start coding by creating an architecture that will allow you to later define new animations easily. Okay. So with all that done, we're gonna copy our command and download the exercise to our little computer. And then we will change director into that and open it up in VS Code. And just like we usually do, uh, oh, we've got multiple files here. Oh, well, that makes sense because we're using behavior and news. Um, okay. Uh, so we've got our animation. So what do we got here? We've got our animation module. Uh, we've got our dancing dots dot dot group. And then we've got our dancing dots dot dot struct, uh, which is just uh, X, Y radius opacity. And it declares a type uh, with the module there. Okay. Doubt we're going to use that. Uh, so I'll close that for now. Uh, please implement the module. Please implement the module. Please implement. This module is an example of how behaviors can be used in practice. You don't need to read it to solve the exercise. It's here for the curious. Okay. I like curiosity. Um, all right. Uh, for now, I'll put the test file up here. Maybe we'll come back to that and do some other stuff, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, then we'll put the readme down here, and we'll hide the source list. And let's get on to task one. Uh, first, I'll just run all the tests so we can observe um, them all failing. Uh, test Explorer, run all tests. And it'll still run the Test Explorer, and it'll show me a bunch of X's in the bar and that's a good sign uh okay task one define the animation behavior each animation module uh needs to implement two callbacks init and handle frame to find them in the animation module okay um so i'll tell you what we're gonna do uh we'll open up that um doc group here uh this module is an example of how behaviors can be used in practice render dots add animation i don't know um okay uh so we're gonna need to define the behavior. So if we come back here and look at our, um, is it here? Yeah. So if we look here, um, basically, uh, when we want to define our behavior, uh, we have def module countable and we declare like a callback to say like, these are the things that this can use. So for this, you know, we're doing the animation behavior. Um, we're going to define the callback. So the functions uh, we need to do are init, which accepts one, and handle frame, which accepts three. Um, 
The net callback should take one argument of type ops. So uh, we'll just call it options and the type will be ops, which is defined up here as a keyword list. Um, and then it returns either an okay ops or error, error. Okay, so okay uh, ops or uh, error, error. That looks okay. Um, and you can also like add new lines if you want it to be a little bit more explicit. Um, yeah, some people will like for formatting, like, I mean, it, it's all style. Um, some people will put multiple lines for those ors. I even saw a tweet recently from Jose talking about considering changing that a little bit, but that's fine. Um, the handle frame callback, it should take three arguments, the dot, uh, frame number, and options. So this is going to take uh, a dot. Um, do we want spaces there? I think we do. A dot, which is of the dot type. Uh, what was the second one? Frame number. Frame number, which is of the frame number type. <laughs> And ops, uh, which is of the ops type. And you know what? I'm going to, knowing this, um, I'm going to come back and just rename that ops as well. But I'm going to put parentheses here to make it that more explicit that that is the type and that is the name. Um, and then handle frame is going to return. Uh, what is it going to return? It should always return a dot. So uh, dot. And uh, yeah, like this is getting long. Um, uh, yeah, we'll leave it one line. I don't know. Um, Okay, so let's run our, let me close this because we're not using that. Um, let's run all the tests, let's see if some of these pass. This task one looks like it's passing. Provide a default implementation for the init callback. Uh, the animation behavior should uh, be easy to incorporate into other modules, calling use dancing dots dot animation. To make that happen, implement the using macro in the animation module so that it sets the animation module as the other module's behavior. It should also provide a default implementation for the init callback. The default implementation of init should return uh, the given options unchanged. So they say for here, by module, my custom animation, you should be able to say use dancing dots, and then you should be able to call init with you know some stuff and you'd get back those options. Okay, um, so again, coming back, uh, we'll look at the example from the concept documentation where they defined the using macro and then they quoted the behavior. So uh, we will do the same. So for us, uh, when you use dancing dots animation, um, uh, you're going to implement uh, the behavior for uh, dancing dots. Uh, and then we need to do uh, the default implementation. So we'll do def init uh, options, and uh, this is just going to return um, those options. Um, do we want to make it overridable? Probably. I would think so. Um, yeah, let's run the test. See if they're green. So task two looks green. Task two is green. Task two is green. Task three. Okay, cool. So now we can go into three. Implement the flicker animation. Use the animation behavior to implement uh, a flickering animation. It should use the default callback because it doesn't take any options. Uh, implement the handle frame callback, which handles a single frame. If the frame number 
is a multiple of four. The function should return the dot with half of its original opacity. In other frames, it should return the dot unchanged. Frames are counted from one. The dot passed to handle frame is always the dot in its original state, not the state from the previous frame. So as an example, when you create a dancing dot, 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 starting at XY 100, radius 24, opacity 1, uh, handle frame dot one dot four. Okay. Um, cool. So Flickr is going to use uh, dancing dots dot animation, and then uh, we're going to implement the callback uh, handle frame, and it's going to accept the dot, the uh, frame number and the options um and because we're implementing a callback we're going to uh put in um impl uh dancing dots dot animation so that way it's clear what we are doing um so this is probably complaining uh we're not using our stuff okay that's fine um okay so when let's see frames are counted from one the dot past handle frame is always the dot original state not the original frame which it did if the frame number is a multiple of four uh the function should return the dot with half of its done okay um multiple of four so there's a couple ways you could do this i mean you could do it with pattern matching where you could like um you could use a guard like when uh i think it would be mod uh right kernel <laughs> kernel dot mod or no it would be uh integer well let me let me let's just open up a new uh thing here mod compute the module remainder of integer division uh prompts floor division reasons are always always higher, always have the sign of the divisor. Um can we use that in a guard? I think we can. Module uh Patterns and guards and or is list abs. Yeah, I don't think we can. We'll do it in inside. Actually, I think I like it inside better. So like if integer dot mod uh, frame number and four, if that equals uh, zero, do else so this is just going to return uh i guess it'll return uh the dots but we want to change the opacity to 0 0.5 uh and else it'll just return the dot as is what don't you like oh you don't want to do that there. Uh, oh, we don't do anything with the ops. If the frame number is a multiple of four, the function should return a dot with half of its original opacity. In other frames, it should return the dot unchanged. Yeah, I don't think we use ops. We'll just ignore that for now. Um. Okay. Is there anything else we need to do for that? I don't think so. Run all tests. So task three, 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 this is gray. Every fourth frame, what don't you like about this? Uh, run test at cursor. 0 0.3. Oh.
It wants half of it. Okay. Um. Uh, I don't want to collapse that. I'll run all tests. Three, 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 four. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Number four. Implement the zoom animation. When the animation behavior to implement, use the animation behavior to implement a zooming animation. This animation takes one option, velocity. Velocity can be any number. If it's negative, the dot gets zoomed out instead of zoomed in. Uh, implement the init callback. Uh, it should validate that the passed in options is a keyword list with a velocity key. If the value of velocity the value of velocity must be a number. If it's not a number, return the error. Uh, the velocity option is required. Its value must be a number. Got blah. Okay. Um, so again, we're going to use uh, dancing dots dot animation, and then we need to uh, do the. Um, we need to implement the init. Uh, init. And this is going to take options and then do. Um, so what we can do is we can say when ops uh, is a keyword. Now is list. Can we do keyword list? I mean, uh, keyword list is a list. Um, validate that the past in options is a keyword list with the velocity key. Okay. Ops and has key. Is list. Is map is map key is nil is number pid. Uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? Um, I mean, the thing of it is, is you cannot, unfortunately, you can't do something like this. You can't do a uh, velocity, you know, um, and capture it like you would a, a map because the, basically a keyword list is just a list of tuples um, with atoms and values. So the order matters um, and they may in fact pass us an options list with other values that are the first element of the list. So you can't, you can't pattern match like that. Um, you know, you can say is list and can you binary Boolean function integer map key number PID reference struct map size. Uh, can you do a guard with can you elixir guard keyword list? Uh, this is going to give us anything good because we can't really I mean ideally what I'd like to do is I'd like to do it as a guard and then just do like an init 
um, and do the error. <laughs> uh, we did that last time, and I kind of like that. But can I guard? It should validate that the past options is a keyword list with a velocity key. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. I'm gonna try this. But I don't think you can do a... I'm pretty sure that's not gonna work. Run test a cursor. Cannot invoke remote function keyword that keyword inside guards. Yeah, I kinda figured that. Um, I mean, you can do his list. Uh, it's not, you know, but can you? Only the constructed list uh, listed in the page allows pattern guards. However, we can take advantage of macros to write custom patterns and guards that simplify our programs. Yeah, I know, kind of know that. Uh, yeah. Comparison operators, Boolean operators, arithmetic, binary, in and out. Type checks functions. Map.field syntax. I don't know if you can do that. Like, I don't know. All right, let's, we'll write it the other way, which is unfortunate. Um, uh, which is not the way I like to do this, but we'll, We'll just get it working. So first we'll do, you know, keyword, uh, is, if this is, is this a keyword list ops and, um, you know, keyword, uh, what is this key? Do they have key? Key is keyword. Keyword. What other functions are available here? Drop equals fetch filter. Good values has key. That looks like what we want. Has key. Uh, has key. And let's see. Pass it the the list. And we are looking for velocity. Uh, v e l o c i t y. Um. So this else thing is going to be the um the error. Uh, return the error. Return an error? I thought weak. Oh, okay, yeah, error. Errors, any, okay. Uh, error. Um, I think they just want the string. They don't want it to be as part of like a, uh, God velocity. Uh, the value of the velocity must be a number. If it's not a number, return the error. Velocity option is required, and its value must be a number. Got inspect velocity. That's weird because, like, I haven't. It's not like I pattern matched into velocity. Why would they expect that value to be there? Um. I would have expected this to just like these, like I, velocity options required. So like if, if the option is not there, do they have that like as a, as a test? I wonder. So like got nil.
So when you call init with an empty list, they would expect the error to say got nil. Hmm. Maybe they do expect us to pattern match in the thing. Yeah, that feels weird to me because, like, if I do that, like, if I try velocity, um, what are you complaining about? Oh, uh, I'll say it's that ops. Do that. And we're not using velocity yet, but we'll do it here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to run a cursor. So. I don't want 10. Where am I? Where am I? Oh, it did that one first. Um, and that failed because I'm not doing anything interesting yet. Let me, I'm going to comment that out for a second. Uh, because I want to see, I want to see how that works. Yeah, it attempted to, attempted function clause velocity equals obs, but like it's not going to work. Um, Function clause error. Yeah, because it couldn't pattern match it. That's what I thought. Um, okay, so let's just keep this as ops. Um, I mean, you could do a thing where you could say ops, you know, uh, and use the access stuff. Did you do that? Um, again, let's comment this out. <laughs> And let's uh, run this uh, at cursor. Seven. Okay, so that this passed. Uh, and it failed here. Okay. So we can do that. Um, okay. All right, moving along. Uh, what are we supposed to be doing here? So we're, we're throwing the error. Implement the init callback. It should validate that the past options keyword list with velocity key. The value of the velocity must be a number. The value of velocity must be a number. Oh, wow. And, oh, um, is number? Ops <laughs> velocity. Uh, wow, that is ugly. Um, Uh, the center mistakes want to implement in it. So that if this all works, then we just return OK ops, right? I think that's what the default did. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's run the tests. Let's run all tests. Let's see if these initializers work. So task four implements. Yeah, we haven't done all that yet, but we did do the init and that seems green. So that's good. So let's do the next one. Uh, implement a uh, handle frame. Um, okay. At impl dance and dots animation define handle frame. And this accepts a dot. A frame and number and a options list. And what do I do? Um, it should return the dot with its radius increased by the current frame number minus one times velocity. Okay. Uh, so we'll take the existing dot and we're going to return it with its uh, radius. Radius changed. The new radius is going to be increased. So dot dot radius is going to be increased by the current frame number. 
frame number minus one times velocity uh, ops velocity. I don't really like calling it like that. Um, we'll put that in parentheses to help with the uh, logic rules. Frames are counted from one. The dot passed to handle frame is always the dot in its original state, not the state from its previous frame. To return the dot with its radius increased by the current frame number of minus one times velocity. Okay. Let's try running all the tests. So we've got some stuff passing. Uh, we've got task four, task four. We've got task four failing. The first time handle frame returns the dot unchanged. The first time. Uh, so if the frame number is one, uh, one minus one is zero times whatever. That should work. Why does that not work? Run at cursor. Okay, so when we passed in a dot frame of one, frame number one, and then a velocity of three. I mean, it's doing, I guess we need to do that first. Uh, the value of velocity must be a number. I did that. It should return the dot with its radius increased by the current frame. Let's just do this uh, increase. The increase uh, is, you know, um, frame number minus one times ops, and then that'll just be the current radius plus the increase. Uh, so in the case of one, one positive one comes in, one minus one is zero, zero times ops. Um, and because we're doing parentheses, that should figure that out first. There's a tractor that has been driving up and down the road a couple times today. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, we're going to run all tests. <laughs> so those are green, those are green, those are green, 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 green. Cool. Everything looks good. Uh, let's run all the tests locally in the console, and those look good. Okay. Um, I'm not really happy with this, but I think I'm going to submit it, and we'll take a peek at uh, the community solutions, uh, and they may have other suggestions. Submit. Lib. Uh, what am I uploading? Um, I guess this. Past. All right, let's take a peek at how the other people did the guards. Um, remainder. No, that's not what we were looking for. Uh, we did mod, um, for our guard. Or no, we did it in, inside here. Um, no, we definitely want to move that to, uh, an option. Um, because that feels better. Remainder. Uh, frame number four. Equals, equals equals zero. I like that. So when that happens, do this. Otherwise, uh, dot frame number ops do dot. 
I like that. Uh, still passes, right? Rex test. Tester. Alright, cool. Yeah, I like that. Uh, remainder. Cool. So these people, um, conditional is integer velocity. Gets the velocity. I mean that that looks standard. That's typically how you get the value out of an options list. And then they just do is integer. It's true. Error. Um. Got nil. That makes sense. Uh. I like that. I mean, the thing of it is, is that like the default behavior is, is just, you know, is just the error, which we kind of do as well. We're like, if, and then only if we verify their stuff, do we do our thing. Otherwise we return the error. Um, the challenge with this, one reason I don't like this, like if you passed, um, so let's open up uh no i don't want an iex section there uh <laughs> so iex um so we've got keyword list ops so like if you passed a, like a string uh for ops um you'll get a uh, function clause error which i don't think they want um which is one failure of this like if you intentionally grab you're making an assumption that ops is, is a keyword list here um you know, and you, you could solve for that with like a type spec and using dialyzer, you know, that's like your call, but it's not as, um, there, there's different levels of like bulletproofness. I don't know. Um, this one, uh, so yeah, so we did that and we weren't really happy with it, but not really happy with that either. Um, Let's see how Ninoco did it. So they similarly, yeah, it's the same solution. Um, and uh, when is number velocity? So they did, they pattern matched on a single option velocity which i i'm surprised that worked um i'm really surprised that worked uh let's get out of the iex uh, and then we'll just say mix test one failure. Yeah, they got fails. Uh, the testament was a custom match while they checked the velocity that was passed on option. Yeah, I mean, that, that fails. Um, uh, this was the test. Yeah, you should be able to pass an empty list, so. Okay, um, well, okay, uh, so we changed something, so we should probably upload a new iteration, um, exorcism submit, and this should be iteration two. Ooh, the robots are unhappy. Uh, check the comments. Don't forget to annotate all the callback implementations with impl. Did we not do that? Oh, we didn't do it up here. Do we have, oh, we have to decorate it both. For both functions, we have to add a decoration. I did not expect that. 
Okay. Uh, let's try one more time. Uh, iteration two. Iteration three is passed, and the analyzer is happy, and so am I. Um, cool. All right, so we're going to mark that as complete. We're going to publish our iterations, and we have learned behaviors and use, uh, and we've unlocked a gen server, uh, and that uh, gen server is the last concept doc, which is cool. So we've got a couple more concepts. Uh, we've got links, task, and gen server. Uh, and yeah, we will get to, oh, we got, some of those are shared. So we'll, tomorrow we'll do, well, today's Friday, um, may not do tomorrow, but, uh, next time we'll do links and tasks and we'll be that much closer to finishing the learning exercises of the Elixir syllabus. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please do let me know. Other than that, have a great day and I will see you next time.